Hello everyone, welcome along to another tactics video. My name is Ash, you'll know me as Brahma18. In this series, if you're new to it, what we do here is we recreate real tactics in game. I'll show you how best to not only accurately recreate them, but how to adapt them slightly in order to achieve that. Welcome along, we are back. We are today covering Louis van Gaal's Ajax team. In particular, I guess the kind of the Champions League winning team of, of 94, 95, but really this system kind of carried through throughout the, the multiple years that he was there. So really excited to get into this one today. A quick notice or two, obviously it's been quite a while since I've last uploaded a tactics video. So thanks a lot for sticking with me during that time. I know a lot of you have been kind of desperate to, to see these return. So I do apologize for that. Naturally, I did get COVID. Um, and then once I did kind of get better and stuff, it did knock me about a little bit. Um, just been waiting for kind of the FIFA 23 reveal, really. Trying to kind of ease off FIFA 22 now. We will do a couple more tactics videos before the release of FIFA 23, but we are easing on them a bit. I'll also be doing exclusive tactics videos on my Patreon. So do go and check that out. The link is down below. Not only can you get access to exclusive tactics videos that aren't on YouTube, but also a range of other perks, such as behind the scenes videos, um, early access to videos, access to my tactics pack, where I give a deep dive and ranking and rating on every tactic as well as access to lots of my fantasy leagues fantasy premier leagues if you're into that you can get access to them uh, through my patreon we're doing a classic and a draft league as well with that being said make sure to hit the subscribe button if you haven't done so already ring the bell so you get notifications every time I upload and without further ado let's get into it right then what do we have with the system itself well there are elements of that kind of Johan Cruyff total football system uh, that we saw him play as, as utilise as kind of a manager as well. Um, and what we have here is obviously that 3 4 3, kind of the narrow midfield diamond as well. Naturally, very hard to replicate. So, first things first with the formation, what do you want to do here? Well, you want to go down to the bottom and you want to make sure you have the 3 4 3 diamond. And this is what that looks like. Then you're going to make a couple of position changes. You're going to bo move both the right and left central midfielder to left central midfield and then right central midfield so as to kind of bring them in and create that narrow midfield diamond. In addition to that, what you're also going to do is you're going to want to make sure that the right and left centre-back are actually a right and left centre-back. I'm working on a theory that actually when you kind of just set a base formation, they're still classed as centre-backs, which means they kind of start and play a little bit more narrow. So just to kind of avoid any confusion there, just change them to right and left centre back. One thing I do want to mention also is that I have not only a balanced game plan, but also a defensive game plan as well. Just to kind of tweak it a little bit, particularly tactically. Um, not so much in terms of the kind of formation and the position instructions. Um, just when, say, maybe you're trying to see out a, a win, see out the lead, or you're playing against a, a better team, etc. But we'll come on to that a little bit later. Next up, what do we have then? Well, we have the tactical instructions. And what we have here, uh, defensively, first of all, is a kind of counter-pressing system, and that's press after possession loss. And what we're looking to do here is not only, obviously, counter-press when we lose the ball, but what I want to kind of hone in on is the fact that when they do lose the ball, because they've got so many players in the forward areas, because of the fact they've only got the free back, it really does help that press as well. When you'll see in the gameplay... Um, on the right hand side of the screen very effective counter press um, that, that works very very well the width is down to 10 making it very compact extremely narrow they were prepared to kind of sacrifice play in the wider areas to really kind of strangle I guess the central areas and stop the opposition playing through them and what the kind of objective of that is is it's just harder to attack you know at some point you have to come on the inside now yes there is an element on fifa of kind of attacking down the wings counter attacking you with their wingers down the wings uh, that's why i'd never advise this for online play only for offline play so if you want to utilize it in seasons maybe avoid um but that's really what they were looking to do with the depth up to 90 very aggressive ultra high line obviously looking to kind of complement that press and that's what I spoke about earlier with that really effective press and also just trying to limit the amount of space that the opposition have um, to kind of play out from the back as well. You're trying to force them to kind of go along more. I mean, naturally, you'll need fast centre-backs for this, so do bear that in mind. Another thing I should mention is that with regard to the lineup itself, obviously some of these players have now left, etc., transferred away. Some of them in slightly strange positions, Matsurawi, centre-back, etc. You know, obviously, we are limited in terms of the players we can play with the Ajax team, so I just kind of 
try to get the players as close to their, their real life counterparts as I possibly could. What do we have offensively? Build up play, we have slow build up and chance creation, we have possession, a much more measured, kind of calculated approach with Louis van Gaal. It's something we've seen throughout his entire career, whether it was Ajax, Barcelona, um, the Netherlands national team, even Manchester United. Very, very patient, very calculated. They don't want to kind of, you know, rush through everything. They're looking to kind of, um, you know, play through the thirds, essentially. And this narrow diamond really does help them do that. A great way to kind of, you know, retain position within the central areas of the park. The width is on 10 offensively. Again, you're looking to really crowd that out. The one thing we will mention, and we'll come on to it more in the uh, player instructions, is the wingers will kind of stay wide. And what you're looking from them is to generate that width. The rest of the players, particularly the central midfield, because you want them so close together to help that kind of short, quick interchanges and those short possession kind of pieces of play and patterns of play, you want it on 10. And it really does help to kind of bring them closer together and crowd that out. Players in the box is on six, giving you three. Now, obviously, you're looking for kind of the attack midfielder to come into the box as well as the two wingers and the striker. But generally, because you're not playing fullbacks, it means if you are crossing the ball in, the chances are it's going to be one of the wingers, which means you don't want, if you move this up to four, for example, and have have it on eight, um, then you might get one of the central midfielders going into the box. You, you're not really looking for that. So we have this on six to try and limit that out. Finally, with the set pieces, corners and free kicks, both of these are on four. Um, and generally what they try to do is they want to get all their centre-backs in the box, the, the midfielders, someone some like Rijkaard as well. Um, you know, just adding an extra element of threat there. So they really didn't do anything different from the free kicks and, and corners in terms of keeping men back. Next up with player instructions then, we'll start off with the keeper and we will work our way through the field, starting with Stecklenburg, who I don't know if it will have happened by yet already or not, but the first goal I concede in this game, please watch out for it, what on earth is going on there? Um, but with Stecklenburg, we've got him on comes for crosses, helping you out, something we speak about often in these videos, always have your keeper on comes for crosses, just helps you, gives you an extra element, I don't know why you wouldn't really in this game, because they are heavy, well protected, and it does help you out in those defensive situations, and saving outside the box is sweeper keeper, with that high line, you're going to hopefully want him coming out further, um, and just being a, an extra defender, essentially, uh, with the back three, Generally, it's the same. One thing with, in this case, Martinez, who's the central centre-back, we've got him on conservative interceptions because we want him to be kind of like the last man, excluding the keeper, of course. Um, and we want him to kind of just cover for the two other centre-backs who are a little bit more aggressive. Now, we haven't put them on aggressive interceptions because what I mean by that is they would often support the attack a little bit more. They'd step up a little bit further. But when you do put on join the attack, it doesn't do anything anyway. So you kind of have to manually do this just with the way you bring the ball out with them, carry the ball forward and help them support the attacks that way. Uh, with the midfield quartet i guess um starting with alvarez playing that right card role he's obviously not only the deep line playmaker he's the hybrid of that deeper playmaker but also um you know that out and out defensive midfielder as well he's just just all-rounded player and that's what we're trying to kind of replicate here so we've got him on cut passing lanes didn't look to man up and they very rarely do particularly in a van Gaal system and then the attacking support is on stay back while attacking we would have ideally liked him to be dropped between defenders because often what he would do is he'd help the kind of build up by dropping back and supporting that defensive line as well. But unfortunately, you can only have that when you have two centre backs or, or a four back system. You can't have that when you have three centre backs in the team. So that is a little bit unfortunate. Interceptions is conservative, similar to the three centre backs. He's kind of playing that cover role, and the two ahead of him are a little bit more industrial, a little bit more aggressive. And finally, with the defensive position, he's also on cover centre. You may occasionally want to mag manually drag him out, but you don't want him being dragged out automatically. Right then, with the two central midfielders, we've got slightly differing roles. Starting with Graven Birch here, doesn't matter which way around. Obviously, I'm just trying to fit the players into the system as best as I can. With the left central midfielder, We've got him on stay on the edge of the box for the cross, and that's the same with the right central midfielder as well. They're also both on normal interceptions. The only difference here is that with attacking support, one of them is on stay back while attacking, which in this case I've just said to Graven Birch, it you know, 
adjust it to whatever your personnel is. It doesn't really matter. Um, and then the right central fielder is on balance attack. We're not looking for him to get into the box. Or what we are looking for is for him to step up a little bit further and just help with the with any possession and patterns of play in the advanced areas, in that attacking third, just to support that a little bit more. We don't want both of them going forward, though. Naturally, we are still kind of protective of the fact that we haven't got wing backs and that the wingers are, in this case, wingers are not wide midfielders. So we do want to just kind of watch out for that as well. And finally, positioning freedom and defensive position for both these are the same. Stick to position and then cover wing. With Berghaus in the attacking midfield role, I guess the kind of Dennis Burkamp role, for example. We've got him on comeback on defence. He'll be looking to trap back. And then support on crosses is getting to the box for the cross. Essentially acting as kind of like a... A second striker, I guess, really trying to support the front man, the centre forward, as much as possible. Um, and just getting in and around him, really, really helpful. Helps not only in kind of, um, you know, goal scoring opportunities, but also in build up play as well. The fact that they're so close to each other, they can really kind of play off and, you know, produce a lot of short, quick interchanges. Positioning freedom is on sticks of position and his interceptions are on normal. Right then, for the two wingers, we have both of them on the same instructions. Now, first things first, defensive support, it's actually on basic. Now, the reason it's on basic and not come back on defence is because if you put these on come back on defence with no wing backs or full backs, what they'll actually do is when you're out of position, they will actually drop back and form a five. And obviously, it's really strange to kind of see that in this sort of system. And that's not how it was. The game does a really good job of recognising when you've not got fullbacks and gets the wingers to drop back when you have comeback on defence. But in this case, it's a little bit too good. Um, so we have them on basic defence support just to make sure they don't drop back and form a back five because that's not what we're looking for. We just want them basically tracking the opposition's fullbacks when they need to and helping the, the defensive unit that way. Chance creation is stay wide. As we kind of alluded to in the tactics earlier, it's a very narrow system. Lots of players compact close together but what we do have is the two wingers are there to create the whip. So they kind of stay wide and they produce lots of kind of attacking moves in terms of getting out into space. You can get the ball out to them. They look to drive at players one-on-one, -on -one, take them on, running behind as well. There's an element of a mixture of both their games. And what you want to do also is you actually want to do hug the touchline on the D-pad instructions. It's so on the attacking D-pad instructions and what that will, again, help them do that. So they are kind of staying close to the touchline on either side. Support runs are on balance. You're not always looking for them to kind of get in behind. Sometimes you want them to drop a bit closer. Again, varied, balanced. They can attack the, uh, the opposition in multiple ways and that is what you are looking for. Support on crosses for both of them is getting to the box with a cross and then inceptions are on normal. Finally then, with the striker, we have him on stay central first of all. He's going to act as that kind of focal point up front. You're not going to want him drifting around too much. And then attacking runs is actually on mixed. With, I guess it would have been Cliver in this situation. They had a couple of different players. But with Cliver, for example, you've got a really all-rounded striker. He does a bit of everything, honestly. You've seen him kind of acting as that poacher, running in behind. You'll see him dropping off, you know, contributing heavily, um, you know, to the build-up play and creating... So the best way to recreate it is just mix attack. You know, you just want a bit of everything. You want that all rounded striker who can do absolutely everything. And that really was the best. Haller, you know, wasn't the best for it. So I couldn't really showcase the role to its best degree with this Ajax team. But um, essentially, that's what you're looking for. That kind of complete forward. Varney's defensive support is on stay forward as he looks to stay up front. And that's as that out ball when you are looking to play it up the field. Right then, I did mention earlier we also have a defensive game plan. So let's quickly have a look at that. There aren't too many changes. There are just a couple of tweaks. And as I alluded to, this is essentially for when maybe you're playing against a bigger team. You want to be a little bit more conservative, but not too conservative. Or you're just trying to see out the game towards the end of the game. So what does happen? Well, there are a couple of tweaks. First off, defensively, this time the depth has gone down to 70. So it is still a high line, but it has dropped off. Obviously, in the balance game plan, uh, if we go have a look here, it's on 90. So really committed. This time, they do just drop off a little bit. You will notice a little bit of a difference as well in that regard. Again, it's just just trying to be a little bit more kind of pragmatic in that regard. Uh, also, what you can do um, is move these down to three this time instead of four, just if you want to be a little bit more kind of conservative in that regard as well. 
Also, with the player instructions, you're also going to notice a slight tweak to the uh, left or the right central midfielder, whichever one you chose. This time, rather than being on balance attack, they are on stay back while attacking, as again, we're just trying to draw them back and make sure they're kind of protecting against any opposition counter-attack, and they just play a little bit more of a conservative role all in all. So do just bear that one in mind as well. So if you've got any questions about the tactic, do not hesitate to let me know. I'll do my best to get back to you. Drop them in the comment section down below and uh, like I say, I will get back to you. Um, any suggestions for future tactics, you're welcome to keep bringing them in. Please don't give me Eric Ten Hag's Manchester United because I keep getting that and they haven't played a game yet as of recording this. If you're watching this within the first couple of weeks of me uploading it, they still won't have played a game. So please don't ask me. As much as I appreciate you really want to see it and you're really into the tactics series, I can't judge a team when they've not played a game. Um, so simple as. If you haven't done so already, make sure to check out my Patreon. The link to that is down below. You can get access to a lot of fantastic perks, as I alluded to earlier. Don't forget to subscribe to the channel and ring the bell so you get notifications every time I upload. And also check out my Twitter. The link to that is also down below, as are the links to lots of other playlists on the channel. On that note, I think we're going to round it off there. Thank you so much for watching. If you've made it through to the end, we're now going to go into some gameplay so you can see the tactic in all its glory. And until next time, I've been Brahma18, and I will see you soon. A big night here at a stadium named after one of the greats of world football. We're at the Johan Cruyff Arena. My name is Derek Ray, positioned here on the commentary gantry, and sitting next to me, ready to give you all the analysis, is Stuart Robson. And what we have on the menu for you is live coverage of the Eredivisie. It's Ajax against Feyenoord. Well, thanks, Derek, as always. The scene is set, two good teams, a great playing surface, and a vibrant atmosphere. It has all the ingredients for a really exciting game. A real opening now. Oh, terrific save. Well, you're absolutely right. That's a top-class save. Just look how he reacts. Trying to pick out a teammate, and still dangerous. Well, they survived the attack. Well, great read there to intercept. Aller is spot on with that challenge. It's a good-looking ball in behind. And able to get a body in the way. Malasia. Perfectly positioned to take it away. I must say, this looks promising. Big chance! And keeping it out. And taken short. Edson Alvarez. Well, unfortunately, he couldn't keep the shot down. Grafenberg. Mazraoui. Kudus. Alvarez now. Ajax being afforded too much space here. So a goal kick is what's coming up here.
Nelson. Gertrude with it. Aursnes. Good looking ball. It's still alive. And a goal it is. Keeper, really not part of the equation. So Ajax restart the game. And we're going to find out if there will be a quick reply from them here. There certainly needs to be. Mohamed Kudus. Sebastian Allaire. And they're eyeing that final pass, you just feel. This could be the equaliser. What a vital intervention. And he did what he had to do defensively. Well, they're on the scent of something positive. Chance to finish. Very alert defending to cut off the supply. And the keeper has possession of it. High quality defending. Kukchu. Well, that's a super ball over the top. Well, it's all going so swimmingly for them here. Another goal. And now it's a matter of avoiding any silly mistakes. Well, here we can see it again, and it starts with the ball over the top. Perfectly weighted, and his movement's so clever. Once he gets onto it, there's only one thought in his head. Smash it as hard as possible. What a good goal. So, 2-0 now. Allaire. Tremendous challenge. Chance. Well, the break looked promising, but the danger has been averted. Nelson. Now can they make something happen? Frederik Aursnes. And that pass could be troublesome. Still possibilities. Applying vigorous pressure. Now he must favour the cross. Going about his defensive business with a minimum of fuss. Well, as those stats tell us, their attacking play today has been exceptional. Defenders have come out at the right time. The midfielder completely dominated the game. And the front player's movement has been excellent. A super tackle and they've won possession. Counter-attacking, very much an option. A real opening now. Surely, really good piece of goalkeeping there. Teal. Are showing good patience. Can they trouble the opposition this time? Surely, interception to snuff out the danger. And he's lost custody of the ball here. Nelson. Into the advanced position. Gertrauda. A fine reading of the situation. Racing forward, trying to catch them out. Tadic. Could reduce the deficit. It could be up for grabs. Allaire. Oh, great defending. Well, 
Well, nearly at the interval, and Ajax know full well they must up their game. Just hasn't gone to plan, Stuart. Well, they've struggled in this first half. They've been outfought, outplayed and outrun. They need to improve all aspects of their play in the second half if they're to get back in this one. Tadic. Oh, commanding goalkeeping. Nelson. If you're wondering about stoppage time, one minute to be added on. Careless in possession. Allaire. In with a chance. A goal as they cut into their advantage. Still plenty of life in this match. Well, here it is again, and it's a superbly weighted through ball to break that defensive line. And there's certainly no doubt about the finish. He really hits it with power and accuracy. Nothing the keeper can do about that. The first half here comes to an end. Plenty to consider based on what we've seen so far as the second half begins. Kukchu. Spot on with that tackle. Not a great challenge. Free kick here. Aller. This could level it, and it is the equaliser, parity now, and who's to say what's going to happen next? Well, let's look at this again. The one and two touch passing is absolutely outstanding to play around the pressure, and once he gets onto it, he just smashes it past the keeper with great technique. What an emphatic finish that is. So back underway, the game having been squared at 2 2. Perfectly positioned to take it away. with Berghaus Sebastian Allaire promising sequence superb block and players waiting in the centre And reading it absolutely superbly. Gustil racing forward, trying to catch them out. Gertrauda. And space for the cross. And very deftly cut out. It is a decent looking attack here. Low ball in. Sound piece of goalkeeping. And so 30 minutes left for play in this one. Great strong tackle. Throw in forthcoming. Senesi. An alert intervention. Sebastian Allaire. Oh, a perfectly timed pass. And nearly the ideal ball, but a good piece of defending. 
Gertruida. Gus Thiel. Read it well. Mohamed Kudus. Here's Berghaus. And a good looking ball. High class defending right on the goal line. Couldn't grab hold of it. Now a decent position. Must take the lead here. He knew he had to make the tackle and did. This might be ideal for the counter. Dessers. Promising possession, this. And the cross not quite accurate enough. Excellent vision. Oh, could be a chance. Strong hand on that one. Gernot Trauna. Gustil. On the ball, Dessers. An effective challenge. In behind for him to chase. Well, here it is again. It's a wonderfully weighted ball over the top. And when he gets onto it, he decides to go for power. It's a really emphatic finish, which gives the keeper no chance. Now they're going to alter things. Here's the substitution. What a big moment in the dying embers. Will it prove decisive here? Seal. Kudus. Ryan Grafenberg. Grafenberg. Well, they're moving the ball neatly enough. Just looking for that decisive pass. Well, it looks so promising, but a goal kicked the outcome. They will now make use of their substitutes bench. Good technique displayed. That's a well-struck pass from one side of the pitch to the other. This could finish it. Well, fantastic reflex action. Well, they'll be looking to add to their advantage from this corner. Now sending it in. Well, it came to nothing in the end. Sinistera. We might very well have late excitement here. Five minutes to go, and just one goal between them. They've got to be really mindful of the time situation, attacking though they might be. And the keeper throws himself at the ball. Well, this might be their final opportunity to draw level. So, making the substitution now. And over it comes, and clears his lines. Using his strength to shield the ball. Gernot Trauner. And an attempt best forgotten, I think. with Berghaus 
Brian Grafenberg. Well, that's one for them to pursue. Well, nothing comes of it in the end because the flag has gone up, Stuart. Well, he knew where the space was, but he's just been too eager, and that's why he's offside. And we are going to have two additional minutes. Kukchu. They are making headway, but really they need a goal with time not on their side. Good tackle. Promising possession, this. This could be the equaliser. And there goes the final whistle. And the home fans are going to be happy about this outcome. <laughs>